It's no doubt at all what the biggest story in town is today, and it is uh, the cash review into trans services uh, for children. And absolutely, I mean, unbelievably unshocking reading it is, because mm. there's nothing in this cash review that I didn't already know. And mm. funnily enough, I'm not a medical, as, as has often been pointed out to me, I'm not a medical expert mm. uh, on this field. And yet I knew everything that she has pointed out. Uh, the paediatrician, Hilary Cass, uh, a former president of the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health, I don't know, may know something about the treatment of children. Let's go out there on a limb, guys. Uh, she says uh, that the evidence for the treatment of children with puberty blockers and the like for, for believing they are trans is weak and based on shaky foundations and no good evidence of long-term outcomes. Not that anyone was even looking for it. They didn't bother. Uh, she's called for uh, much more uh, care to be taken with anyone under the age of 25. End to all puberty blocking hormone drugs for under 18s, although they are still available in private clinics and in the NHS in Scotland. Uh, and pointed out that many who do believe that they're trans have experienced trauma, neglect, abuse. Uh, many have autism, other ha mental health problems. And also, an awful lot of the girls are just simply gay. Uh, they're not born in a boy's, in a girl in a boy's body or a boy in a girl's body. They're just simply gay. Uh, she's suggested more holistic therapeutic support uh, for children. Basically, not treating them as if their only issue is that they are trans because there is no such thing, remember, as a trans child. Uh, but she also said there was really no clear evidence that social transitioning, this idea of saying, well, yes, I'll agree to call you by an opposite gender name and different pronouns, um, will help help or indeed uh, hinder those children. It's four years. It's a 388-page report. Um, Benedict Spence, um, it's great that this report is out. Will it change anything? Well, that's the big question. It'll require, I think, sort of root and branch action. And it will require action by government, actually, to do this. Because, of course, the incoming government has an even worse sort of stance than the Labour, actual if government. Assuming Labour win. Well, yes. Yeah. Let's assume that Labour win. Yeah. Um, that it's going to require... And I know that you know not everybody in the Labour Party actually is of the same view as this. There have been some very brave... I think Rosie Duffield and others have, uh, have actually sort of taken a stand amongst uh, against some real vitriol. Uh, actually uh, in the party. I'd be interested to hear what we're streeting the future, likely future health secretary is going to say about this report and if it's going to be implemented. But that's the key thing. This stuff was known. It's now out there, pretty much in black and white. There's no getting away from it. Mm -hmm. Will we see this actually being acted upon? Will we see people who push this ideology uh, being brought to task and in certain cases potentially dismissed? Um, is that going to happen? And ultimately, I also want to know what are the safeguards going to be against the next mimetic social contagion that's going to affect our children? Because exactly. this is not the first thing, be it you know eating disorders, yep. be it self harm. You know, of course, which all of these are a form of self harm. How are we going to stop the next thing? It's yeah. all very well saying years after the fact, we finally determined that this well, is the Well, now move on to the next, the next one. Thing? And this is what we know. We know that traumatised children, that children mm. who are neglected, children who are abused, children who... Uh, who, who so we've all, we, when we were a kid, we all knew these kids. The kids are just unhappy in themselves, mm. you know, and that these children, you know, they are very, very vulnerable to be victims to this sort of thing. And we know that that happens. Mm. And yet, oh, let's just happen, let it happen the next thing. Like, what amazes me is that, you know... Ugh, with children with eating disorders, and we've all known either friends or family members or, mm. or our people, friends, children with eating disorders, you don't go around to a child that believes that they are desperately, desperately fat when actually they're desperately, desperately unhealthily thin, mm. possibly even, you know, could die as a result of lack of malnutrition. And when they say, I'm, a, I'm really, really fat, I need your help to mm. help me diet more, we don't help them. We don't. We don't affirm that and say yeah. yes. That's yes. You are. And yet on the trans issue, yes, you are born in the wrong body. No one is born in the wrong body. That's mm. one of my phrases now. Not a thing. Yeah, because this is the dangerous part where it begins to cross over from simply being self-harm to being about ideology and personhood. Yeah. Identity has become such a self-consuming yeah. thing in the United Kingdom, which is bizarre and because United it didn't. Use, but that's where it comes from. That's the point. It's because we are downstream of culture in the United States. A lot of this stuff is being imported. And you see this when it comes to racism, when it comes to yeah. uh, when it comes to religious background. Suddenly, this is important. Suddenly, this is a thing. When you take a simple question of very unhappy, very vulnerable people, and you apply self-harm and then you put a sprinkling of identity into yep. it it becomes an incredibly and, toxic and thing. when you medicalize it and look yeah. at it, it's interesting you know how slow the organizations like stonewall um and uh, and mermaids and others uh, have been isn't mm. it? it's really interesting in they, they, yeah. they're given responses today and they're kind of mixed and it's, i find it's fascinating even like the bbc's response today you know so people like me who they would have regarded as mm. bigots i would say i lost a lot i'm perfectly happy to lose work for giving my views because i'm no 
never mm. going to stop giving my views. Uh, people say, oh, yeah, you, you, you get paid to say things about Israel. Or, you know, I don't. I just get paid to give my honestly held opinions. Mm. I, I lost a load of work from being a Brexiteer. Fine, stand by that forever. Mm. I lost a load of work post lockdown for having been, well, apparently, you know, uh, COVID denial and all mm. of this absolute nonsense. The most work I've lost is over standing up on the trans issue. Never, like JK Rowling and Maya Forstett and everyone, never uttered a word in, in, in hatred mm. or, or, or any way of anyone who is trans, but simply wanted to protect people who are being exploited and mm. medicalized. And I would say mutilated and brutalized by, mm. by this, this, this political ideology. Um, and that's the thing. And it, and it is people like, I mean, like the BBC who refused to ever have Helen Joyce on about mm -hmm. her book Trans, which has been a game changer book for a lot of people. It is absolutely extraordinary. Oh very quickly changing their tune when one of them writes a book about mm. it and exposes what is really going on. I mean, mm. I'm sorry, these people disgust me. I was going to say, it's, it's front page of The Guardian today, which must be very interesting in that newsroom, given some of the conversations that have been happening And the number there. of women who've been forced out of jobs there because they refuse to have the Absolutely. erasure of women on this one. But it's interesting, one of the things that, in fact, the only thing I disagree with Hilary Cass, the, the author mm. of this report on, is that she talked about how the toxicity, toxicity of the debate is exceptional, and how this prevented mm. people particularly in the Tavistock clinic that was treating children to sort of coming forward and, and present, you know, prevented problems. Mm. They, it was never a toxic debate. Yeah. It was toxic on one side. People who've been trying to protect the mm. whistleblowers, the medics speaking out, the therapists speaking out, the, the campaigners, the parents, desperately trying to mm. protect children from this absolute medical scandal yeah. have not been shouting abuse at people the people who have criticized us though we are you know we're bigots we're transphobes we're bait which we're, we're child killers mm. that is i think a quirk of our liberal democracy which is that when there is one side that is very vociferous and aggressive towards the other in order to slightly placate that side whoever is arbitrating yeah. has to go everybody calm down you see this of course with the israel uh, gaza marches as well yeah. it's always everybody has yeah. to be very calm even though it's only one side that's calling for exactly. genocide it's you that, have to do it's that like almost sort of two like a naughty box, children and one of them's just battering the other one and parents come in yeah. and punish them both and it's like no sorry Hilary Cass no, my side mm. hasn't been toxic we've been trying to save children's lives sorry mm. God, can't be old-fashioned on that front um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this I kind of know what a lot of them are because you're far too sensible to have different views but you're welcome to have different views if you want to call in you want to tell us uh, you completely disagree with the cash review or your concerns about it I'd love to hear your thoughts as well but do get in touch what is your reaction to that review give us a call 0344 499 1000 text 87222 you can get in touch on x at talk uh, tv as well uh, don't forget calls are charged at the national rate text cost one standard network rate message um, we're going to get a call up uh, in just a few moments and look at I've got a lot more text coming in but I also want to ask you about the European Court of Human Rights uh, an extraordinary ruling, mm -hmm. a climate ruling. A bunch of elderly women in their 70s in Switzerland took a case to the European Court of Human Rights, Strasbourg, um, where they, and they are basically saying, we're, we're elderly women, we're more at risk of heat waves and the failure of the Swiss government to match their uh, net zero uh, carbon you know, decarbonisation mm. targets means that we're at risk of dying as a result of this. We have a human right to be protected from this. And astonishingly, instead of being told, oh, do sod off. Mm. <laughs> so, no offence, get back to your crochet. Um, <laughs> I know that's what women in their 70s do. Get, <laughs> your get back yodeling. to your yodeling. Get back to whatever it is you do. But no, what a load of nonsense. You don't have, you, you don't have a right to be, a human right to be protected from mm. climate change, uh, which is natural, by the way. Oh, hi, Ofcom. Um, uh, but uh, extraordinarily, um, they won that case. Um, mm. We need to leave the European Court of Human Rights. This is a binding uh, court decision. And by the way, could be the first of many. Um, yeah, and it's it's it, the scope of what this of what this touches on is vast. It is so far beyond the remit of what any court should yeah. have, domestic or international. And I really do think, you know, we've had, we've had this when it comes to the migration issue, effectively being told sotto voce, you can't decide what your own uh, yeah, immigration policy is because a country? court somewhere else yeah. in another co uh, country will say, you know, you can't do that. Well, now we're having energy policy as well and everything that comes with that. It'll yeah. be building regulations. It'll yeah. be about production. It's our production, entire economy. It's, it's industrial output. They can just, you know, carte blanche, go, oh, yeah, well, way, you have a right to this. I, it'd be bad enough if these people were judges, but they're not even judges mm. these people are even are lay people they they have they're not even like you know top qc's equivalent they i mean and again it, it is extremely mm. unaccountable yeah. unelected undemocratic but mm. a foreign court mm. 
telling people what they can do in their country, and that would apply to us as well. Yeah, if it was a British court and if these were British experts that had been appointed on you know, an open, transparent process by a no. democratically elected government, no. even then it would even be very, then. very hard. But the fact is, none of these safeguards, but, these democratic no. safeguards, actually apply. By the way, and we're supposed to just go along. The with democratic it. safeguards didn't even apply when the, in 2019 uh, mm. Theresa May pushed this through. There wasn't even a vote in Parliament on it. They talked about it for yep. less than an hour. It is absolutely extraordinary. Um, let's talk about what's going on in Parliament as well. William Bragg, bye bye, was a Tory MP. We already knew he was standing down at the next election anyway. He stood down now as a select committee chair, vice chair of the 1922 Backbench Committee. Mm. He's also uh, decided he, he will no longer take the Tory whip, so he's now an independent MP until the next election. This mm. after he uh, well, exposed himself in so many different ways. Uh, he told the authorities that he had been the victim of a honey trap sting. Uh, via the Grinder da gay dating mm. website, and he had decided, in all his infinite wit and wisdom, mm. to send a naked photo of himself, including his erect tonsure. We understand, yeah. uh, although I have been told some numerous stories which are, are even more hair raising than that. Um, uh, and uh, and and he also then was blackmailed over this, and and then decided to hand over phone numbers of his colleagues and political journalists. Treachery in the extreme. How this man, as is, as is, I mean, he was he was called courageous by Jeremy Hunt for coming forward. I think I was saying on the show yesterday, playing the gay card, mm. playing that I've had mental health and depression problems card. That is not a get out of jail uh, free card. I'm sorry, yeah. it's not. I'm sympath I'm sympathetic to any mental health problems, but I don't. If this was a straight guy. Mm who wasn't claiming these issues, mm. who'd sent these to a supposed woman, we'd all be, ha it's fine to laugh at him. No one would be calling him courageous. No, especially, I mean, you know, being a public, uh, a, member, uh, a member of parliament, being a sort of a public official representative, mm. all of this is risky enough, you know, imaging your appendages and sending them to people as it is. But Imaging being called... your appendages. <laughs> that, guys, is what a private <laughs> education gets you, that sort of vocabulary. But I tell you what, it's even worse if your name is William. Something should have been there to say, do you know what, maybe this will come back to bite me. You know, the, the gods determine All of these phrases happen. are definitely going to end in tears absolutely aren't they? absolutely i mean honestly we all knew that he was going to lose the whip at some point he's decided to take it upon himself to do it before before the party has yep. i understand the sort of the hesitancy because there might be questions around this that we don't know but we all knew it was going to happen it probably yep. should have happened sooner oh, you probably. cannot it, trust which he soon act should have taken action but again what normally happens well, no. is it's behind the scenes courageous. and the whip say well that was jeremy hunt Sorry, again. yes when has jeremy hunt ever said anything you've agreed with Give me two days. I'll, I mean, I'll get no, back I mean, to you. never. But I mean, Jeremy Hunt's going to lose his seat in the next election. Hooray for that, yeah. whether he likes it or not. Um, no, but this thing—it just shows the weakness of not taking action. Again, it's just. But I think what most people are thinking mm. is, what on earth are these MPs doing all day? What they think? Well, it's tractor porn. Mm. What, I mean, what, the, <laughs> what the hell is going on in there? Whole new meaning to I've got a brand new combine harvester, and I'll give you the key. I think <laughs> really, it's. I think that that's the big takeaway from this last intake of MPs is the poor quality of so many of them. Now we don't expect all of them to be perfect all the time, but well, the general okay. low standard could has they, been appalling. Could they not all be say. perverts? It would, well, I mean, where do... I mean, obviously, I got told off <laughs> they're, they're Tory MPs. The amount of times, I, mean, the amount of times I asked people whether or not they said a picture of their erect penis. I think I've said the word penis. I'm doing it again. The word penis on this show more times in the last week than I Can we have some other words that aren't off comable for, for that sort of thing? Just so the, we can bury it up a little bit. It's the correct biological bit. term. I shall continue <laughs> to use it. Um, oh, no, your kids might be on Easter holiday. So, exactly. Soz about that, mums and dads. Don't send images anyway, of your William. Let's, there we go. Yeah, simple. Uh, or, or if it's your Euro, yeah, Willy Rag. Yes. Um, let's talk about Israel and Gaza. A number of developments here. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu um, has done an interview. He did it a week ago, but it went out on American TV last night, basically saying he believes... Not mm. Benjamin, I keep saying Benjamin. Biden uh, did You're an as interview. You're bad as Joe Biden. You can't remember Tell who's it, involved in the story. It's been written really badly here. I'm trying to write my notes. <laughs> Biden um, yes. is on an interview in which he says that Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, is making a mistake uh, by it with his Gaza policy. Um, we know that Netanyahu is saying, look, there's a date for this invasion of Rafa. Mm. Uh, Biden also called uh, for there to be um, a, a six to eight week ceasefire mm. in Gaza to allow medical aid and food supplies in. Um, this also, as this morning Rishi Sunak has done some uh, pool interviews where he's talked about he wants an immediate pause in Gaza. There's no doubt at all there's been a massive concern about mm. certainly malnutrition, starvation uh, among among the uh, civilians in Gaza, yeah. but but also a concern about this this Rafa uh, uh, exercise if it, if and when this does take place. But interesting also, David Cameron at a press conference with the US Secretary of State yesterday said the UK will not suspend arms to Israel and that the current mm. legal advice is still 
in place and yeah. that they can still supply uh, weapons to Israel. Your thoughts on all of that? But there has been, everybody's saying there needs to be a pause. There has been a pause. We've been talking about the impending invasion of Rafah for weeks now and it's not happened. And in fact, the Israelis pulled a lot of their troops, the majority of their troops, out of Gaza for some time. They have been paused, re you know, realistically. I think a lot of this is posturing. I mean, Rishi Sunak is doing this because British aid workers were killed in an errant Israeli strike. Joe Biden is calling for this because his voters are very pro-Palestine, or a lot of them are, and he fears, as he should, that he's going to lose the next presidential uh, election. And again, That's it's not just the large coming. Muslim population. It yeah. is that the whole left of the it Democrat is the Party progressive left is virulently anti-Israel. It cannot bear the idea of Jews not being victims. As a minority, yep, it cannot bear the idea of them being ascendant and strong and self-determining. They hate that. But the thing is, with all of this, is the Biden administration has had to change tack. It's been putting pressure on Israel for a long time. The whole point of Israel is existing is so that foreign governments can't pressure it into doing things they don't want. So it's gone to the the Biden administration has gone to the Egyptians. It's gone to Gaza, uh, to Hamas, uh, Qatar, sorry, and said, "Look, you need to put pressure on Hamas because these people will not stop." Yeah. There was then the negotiations over the hostage deal a couple of days ago. It was suggested that was closed and. And then it's come out very recently, ah, Hamas has said these people might not be alive. Yeah. Obviously then the Israelis are going to go, right, well, what have we got to wait well, for? Well, them? and that's the thing, isn't it? And it's getting, mm. the, 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 apparently Israel had asked for the release of at least 40 uh, Israeli hostages and Hamas said, we, we're not sure we have 40 yes. hostages to release. Mm. We don't know whether people are dead or whether they've been sold on. There was there was mm. talk earlier on that people have been sold. I mean, just again, Grotesque. that is how they that is how they view human life, mm. uh, including of Palestinians, trying mm -hmm. to make that point to an awful lot of people. Um, we shall see how that develops. It's unusual, actually, to be talking so little about what's going on yeah. in Israel and Gaza today, but no doubt we'll, we'll be coming back to that. Um, I just want to talk also about um, the sale of mobile phones to under-16s. It was mooted that this could be a policy that the government was looking at, uh, mm. to ban the sale of mobile phones to under-16s. They kind of rode back on it with one of those wonderful non-denial denials where they're not going to comment on policy. But it's a, it's a one-word story, this uh, one-line one story, because it's like, who do they think? buys the mobile phones for under 16. Yeah, I, I, I Where are they think... they getting the money from to I, buy mobile I, phones? I really, I appreciate, you know, as we were talking about earlier, social media phones, yeah. it can be very damaging. We need to actually think a lot better about how we conduct hygiene around phones is the way that I put it, and perhaps that needs to be taught in schools. But a blanket ban? What is it with this government, Rishi Sunak, just Love banning ban. things that they... Either he, Sunak, likes it, chess and cricket, in which case he subsidises it, yeah. or he doesn't, in which case he just bans yeah. it. But, but also, again, I mean, like, not in favour of just banning things generally, especially when it won't work, mm. um, but, but also your parents are buying them. But, you know, obviously, we're talking about, you know, smartphones yeah. rather than, you know, the old block phones. But again, it is a parenting issue, but I also understand a lot of parents, well, there are parents who don't do their job, an awful lot of parents who don't mm. do their mm. job properly these days, but there are also a lot of parents who want to do the job properly, but they can't have the only kid who doesn't have social media in the class because they're ostracised they don't get invited to any parties so I completely understand why parents give into this but so yeah. much of this is about how you parent at home not just mm. what's yeah. happening outside it's like you know are you having family meals are you talking to each other if you're all sitting on your phone so the amount of times I sit in a, a, a restaurant on a holiday or something, and you mm. see everyone just sits down and they literally yeah. sit down and then all of them mum dad you know, son or daughter sit down and look at their phones and no one speaks it's no a one speaks. It's a fundamental issue. There needs to be a sort of a holistic approach to changing this because it is very damaging. Just going, OK, we're going to ban phones to under yeah. 16s. That's not actually Indeed. the solution. It's it's the hammer approach Indeed. to a problem. And just finally, shoplifting crackdown. Um, latest announcements today. This is the big ministerial announcement. A crackdown on shoplifters, special tags, more CCTV, you know, face recognition, yeah. all that nonsense. We spoke to a former copper, Chris Phillips, a little bit earlier. We know it's an absolute load of nonsense. They, they don't. They don't arrest these people. They don't charge these mm -hmm. people. If they do, and they go to court, they don't go to prison. Yeah. We've given up. It's, we've basically legalised shoplifting. At the same time that we've decided, or Scotland rather, has decided that you know nasty words are requiring of a lot more police time. Actually, yeah. in other parts of the country, we've decided. Do you know what? Actually, maybe shoplifting isn't such a good thing. But I'll believe it when I see it. And the first thing I'm afraid we'll be building more police uh, 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 prison cells prison and cells. hiring more police on the beat for that sort of thing, Absolutely. responding to these sorts of things. Absolutely. That's the key thing, because again, they don't. No, exactly. No, These people are not afraid of the law. Mm. End of story. Thank you very much, Benedict. Uh, thank you. Lots and lots of topics to talk about. But we are coming come back to our uh, biggest topic of the day, which is this CAS review, a landmark review into uh, transgender services for children in the NHS. And basically, children who believe that they are trans, because they're not actually trans, they just believe it, should not be given puberty blockers, uh, says the review. And 
thousands of youngsters have been let down by the NHS. Wondering what your reaction is, you can give us a call on 0344 499 1000, text 87222 and get in touch on X at Talk TV. A lot of you have been doing that. Let's get to some of those texts and uh, uh, tweets before we get to a caller. Uh, Ollie says, they finished another trial social experiment more like. People have bleated about this for the past three years and the experts only see sense now. I'd like to point out, someone's just uh, tweeted me, um, X to me, whatever, um, and I've, I've put it out again. Uh, an interview I did uh, um, online uh, in 2020 when I talked about how uh, at some point this is going to stop and people are going to start going to prison. So, you know, four years early, but, you know, 